welcome to Three Count Commentaries. This is your host, Mongo Slade. Today, we're going to read an article called Shahid Khan is AEW's Only Hope Now. It was written by John Powell of Slam Wrestling on April 17th, 2024. And it is exactly what you think. John Powell was making the argument that Shahid Khan needs to step in to save AEW from Tony Khan. It's insane. We got, we, we, ooh, buddy. <laughs> ooh, buddy. So the article starts with John Powell talking about his own son and how his son is irresponsible and showed up to work and really bad head space and all this kind of stuff. And he says, quote, no matter how old they are, though, there are times when things have gone so badly and so wrong for one reason or another that you would be irresponsible if you didn't intercede and hold that life lined up or string up that safety net for your child because you love them with all your heart and soul. It's that time Shahid Khan, Tony Khan's father and one of the principal owners of AEW, did that for his son. So he says, quote, back in 2019, AEW was a wrestling fan's dream come true. Finally, there was a promotion that could provide an alternative to Vince McMahon's WWE. At that time, WWE was the McDonald's of pro wrestling. It was wrestling for the mainstream with focus on angles and not the actual matches themselves. If you hungered for better in-ring action, you watched NXT, Impact, or New Japan. Uh, it's still the McDonald's of pro wrestling. <laughs> it's never stopped being the McDonald's. It's just uh, matches featuring worse wrestlers now. A new Catch Republic. If you like that kind of thing. <laughs> I don't. I can tell you that. Um, so he talks about what he wanted AEW to achieve. He wanted them to be like ECW or WCW. Um, but those companies were mismanaged into oblivion. Then he says, AEW reignited the hope that there would be a competitive alternative in North America to Vince McMahon's brand of sports entertainment, which is in quotations. Despite their missteps, it appeared that AEW would be just that. In a short period of time, they would become everything fans and talent wanted them to be. Dynamite was much to watch TV featuring veterans and some truly talented rising stars like Darby Allin, Jade Cargill, the acclaimed, and of course MJF. Dynamite was must see TV? Was it? Because the ratings did not show that. Even when CM Punk was there, the ratings kind of stagnated at like 800, 900,000. Like, it's. I don't know. <sighs> Whatever. Let's keep going. He says, um, in 2022, the wheels began wobbling, and just a few years later, they have completely fallen off. AEW is now known for putting on great pay-per-views and premiere events, but their weekly television shows are terrible. They isn't. They isn't. any. There is, they isn't, is what he wrote. It should read, there isn't any long-term booking. There are random matches for no logical reason. People appear and disappear from AEW television and popular stars run hot and cold because of their inconsistent booking. Because of that, North America ticket sales have been in the gutter for some time, signaling AEW's continued diminishing popularity. So let's let's take a pause here. Uh, there is no long term. But look, there, this was the same company that booked War Horse. For one-off matches, right? This is the same company that brought in like Jeff Cobb for a one-off match. They've been bringing in random people for no reason. <laughs> you know? And that's the shit we complained about. We said like, hey, what are you doing? Stop bringing in people for no reason. Tell us who these folks are. Build angles. You know, tell stories. You know? And they're just kind of like, shut your mouth. We're doing what we do over here. You go back and you watch Monday Night Raw over there. And... That's what we did. People just casually walked the fuck away. I mean, that's what they that's what they told you to do. You did what they asked. So then uh, he says, as of the writing of this piece, AEW held Battle of the Belts and Collision at the truest arena in Highland Heights, Kentucky. There were 2,471 fans in attendance. Highland Heights, Kentucky? That's literally the middle of nowhere, USA. <laughs> I couldn't find that place if I was standing in it right now. And he says about a month ago, AEW's presentation of Dynamite 
was out of the Angel of the Winds Arena in Everett, Washington. And <laughs> Everett, Washington, where are these places? Can you, whoever is booking your arenas, brother, find something in this dimension. <laughs> where are you? Where are you putting these people? How, Everett, Washington? What is the population? Let's look at the population of Everett, Washington. <clears throat> Let's do it right now. Because I don't understand. Um, population of Everett, Washington. 111,000 people as of 2022. 111,000 people. That's a, that's a decent size. That's not, that's not bad. 111,000. That's not bad. Uh, they did 2,511 people in the building. Oof. Ouch. Ouch. Uh, they says AEW Dynamite at Indiana Farmers Coliseum in Indianapolis. Hey, I know where that is. <laughs> I know where Indianapolis is. I went to the Circle CD Classic a couple of times. It's pretty fun, man. Nap Town or something else. Um, anyway, they sold 1,809, less than 2,000 tickets. Oh, no. AEW Dynasty on April 21st. Has sold 5,649 tickets so far. And Double or Nothing has sold 5,239 tickets. Whew. That's them tough numbers right there, bro. That's tough. To, ooh, that's tough. Putting these numbers into context is that the company just signed marquee stars such as Deanna Perrazzo, Edge, Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks, um, Kazuchi Kata. And Will Ospreay, <clears throat> who were proven to put butts in seats elsewhere. Um, wait a second. I want to raise my hand. Under what umbrella was Diana Perazzo a draw? Don't tell me Impact. <laughs> I, look, I liked her in Impact, but it was mostly during the pandemic. And Impact would usually, there are more people, there are more children in a kindergarten class than show up. At an impact show. She's never been a draw anywhere on planet earth. All right. So I don't know. You can make the argument for everybody else. But Deanna Perrazzo. No, no, no. Take her off this list. Draw a line through that one. It continues. These stars assuredly still can interest and excitement. Just not in AEW. These stars assuredly still can interest. I guess you meant still draw interest and excitement. Oh, buddy, get an editor. <laughs> Greg Oliver, where the hell are you? Uh, <laughs> it says, why? Because except for maybe a handful of like Jay Cargill, MJF, the acclaimed Julia Hart, John Moxley, Hikari Rashida, Jamie Hayter, Darby Allen, and Britt Baker, whose presence and impact in and on the industry has grown since being there. Most others have had their careers fumbled by AEW. Oh, my God. Most have had their careers fumbled by AEW. Oof. Their stock, their value in the business has plummeted due to their poor booking and presentation. Mm. He's about to give some he about to give some examples. I, I, need, I need to sit down for this one. I need to sit down for these examples. So he says, take for instance free agent Matt Hardy. He re <laughs> No, I'm not gonna let you sit here and say Matt Hardy had anything to <laughs> No, we're not blaming this one on Tony Khan. Matt Hardy has been shit since 2018. No, skip that. Who's next? Who else you got? Um, he says, imagine how incompetent your booking team has to be to botch the return of a legendary tag team like the Hardy Boys. No, 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 no. Matt Hardy sucks, and he's virtually immobile and has been for a really long time. And Jeff, oh my God, Jeff. Please don't get me started on Jeff. Let's let's kindly move the Hardy Boys to the side. All right. No, no Hardys. We're not letting I'm not gonna let you blame the downfall of the Hardy Boys on Tony Khan. Yes, it was bad. Absolutely it was bad. It was written terribly, it was executed terribly, but you the Hardy Boys that he ordered are not the Hardy Boys that he got. All right. It's just but if he had watched Matt Hardy, he would have known the Matt Hardy he was going to get. Let's move it on. 
AEW hotshot someone for about four months or so, and then slowly but surely their appearances become more and more sporadic until they are completely forgotten about, or almost completely forgotten about. Like these fine folks, A.R. Fox. <laughs> he used to be everywhere. He used to be on every show. A.R. Fox used to be on every show, and now he is on nothing. Where is he? Is he in ROH? <laughs> oh, Brian Keith. Well, he still pops up every now and again, but he hasn't been everywhere either. Dan Housen. Well, he's been injured. He spent a lot of time hurt, and he's on Team CM Punk. So he might be in the doghouse for some of these, for some of the uh, CM Punk's bad behavior. Ethan Page. Oh, I forgot about him. I forgot Ethan Page was even a person or a thing that exists. Jake Hager. Uh, I wish I could forget that he exists. Jay Lethal. Well, I remember seeing Jay Lethal there. I don't remember it. I think he was there recently. He might have been on Ring of Honor recently. Uh, Johnny TV. Oh, he's a Rampage only guy. He never shows up anywhere else. Keith Lee. Oh, well, Keith Lee's. It's over for him, man. It's a really a dirty. He was most recently seen backstage at the Hall of Fame. <laughs> That was the most Keith Lee has done in two years. Lance Archer. Lance Archer was on television recently. But before then, he hadn't been on TV in forever. Miro. Miro, oh my God. I can't even tell you when the last time I saw Miro. I think he beat up Andrade at a pay-per-view, but I can't remember what pay-per-view it was. But I'm pretty sure it was in 2024. Uh, Paul White. Oh my God. I forgot he still worked there. He still draws a paycheck. What does he do? Because Dark and Dark Elevation don't even exist anymore. So what does he do? Scorpio Sky? Well, he sucks. So, I mean, <laughs> whatever. Uh, Tony Nice. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, what happened to Tony Nice? Um, I guess he's in Ring of Honor, I guess. Chris Statlander. Well, I saw her on TV. She was dressed like uh, the girl from The Matrix. She doesn't wrestle or anything anymore unless she comes out there losing. Mercedes Martinez. Yeah, what happened to Mercedes Martinez? Penelope Ford. Yeah, what happened to her? <laughs> uh, Ruby Soho. Oh, she's a Rampage uh, She's a rampage OG now. Soraya, also a Rampage OG now. And Taya Valkyrie, who's also a Rampage OG now. So, like... Yeah, uh, quite a few of these people are stuck on Rampage or ROH or something. He then continues by saying, It boggles the mind when one thinks about how much talent AEW has that are not ready for prime time is just squandered by poor booking or paid to sit home for months and perhaps years on end making sporadic appearances on AEW television. He compares it to WCW where he says some talent flocked to or stayed with the promotion because they knew they could get an easy paycheck by doing next to nothing at all to actually earn it. It was free money. If you can even find someone who is willing to deposit hundreds of thousands of dollars in your bank account and you only have to show up for work a handful of times each year, why not? Yeah. Um, that's money mark syndrome that we talked about, you know, um, I don't think Tony even realizes how much of this stuff that he pays for. And maybe somebody needs to send him like an itemized list of like, you have to approve every single paycheck that goes out. Then maybe he'll pay attention. Like if he had to literally sit and sign everybody's paycheck, he probably would like get a, get like a pay sheet, uh, an invoice from like Tony Neeson and be like, who the fuck is this guy? And why am I paying him $20 to be here? Like, we're paying for flights for this guy? Who the fuck is he? Maybe he may actually have that response if he got an invoice or a bill or something. He had to sit down and look at it himself, you know? Because I know I probably would. Get an itemized list of all your talents and look at that and be like, we don't need this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, you know? And you need to do like, massive cuts. If for nothing more than just to churn the roster. So, uh, he continues. Like the saying goes, a fool and his money are soon parted. Especially if your name is Tony Khan. We come to another cornerstone of any wrestling business, and that is television ratings and television rights. You definitely cannot take your promotion to the next level without some kind of television deal outside of YouTube. 
let gloss over the fact that AEW doesn't even have a streaming service or it's a part of a streaming service in today's entertainment climate. Even TNA has a streaming service. That is a good point. That's a good point. Um, I think AEW is basically waiting for Warner Brothers to give them that. But they could have proven themselves by now. You know, they could have went out and maybe they would just maybe they can't. Maybe it's, I don't know what the contract looks like. Um, maybe they are exclusive to Warner Brothers and they can't go anywhere else or do anything else. And if they have some kind of exclusivity deal with Warner Brothers, then maybe that's why they can't move forward. Um, they should not do that. If that's going to be the case, you know, if you have to sit by and try to get people to pay $50 per shot for a pay-per-view when you really could just open up the market. <clears throat> to, you know, selling to a different streaming service and have people invest in your pro in your company and invest in your product, that might actually be better for you. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know the, the numbers and all that kind of stuff that might need to be involved for that. So he starts talking about the TV ratings. He says, as of the writing of this piece, AEW's uh, 10 Dynamite Week Average is 796,000 viewers per episode and a key demo of 0.27. What's worse than that is viewership is either down or about the same each week. Dynamite is not gaining new viewers. There is no growth. No matter where they, who they sign, no matter what their main event is, no matter what angles they run, AEW cannot pop a rating. They did pop a rating with the uh, CM Punk thing, but it didn't go high. He mentions that the all out footage uh, popped the rating for a little bit, but says the viewership of the episode still ended up at 723,000 without taking into account the, uh, the small, all the small jump for all in footage. He says the last dynamite that topped 900,000 viewers was in October, 2023 during the dynamite dozen battle Royal. The last time dynamite topped a million viewers was in February, 2023. Ooh, mm. I've been a year in no Millie. I thought that's a 4chan meme. Despite what some fans might think, these numbers do matter. They cannot be dismissed just because, for all intents and purposes, Shahid Khan bankrolled this venture. It isn't wise professionally to keep shoveling money into a sinkhole, a company that is underperforming and shows no signs of growth, if only because it poorly reflects on your reputation as a business magnet. That is interesting. You know, your failure is, is reflecting badly upon me. So I'm going to pull the plug on this thing or I'm going to fire you and put somebody else in control of this thing. Um, I think the, 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 the mere fact that he's in business of pro wrestling probably looks bad for him. People don't like wrestling, you know, in, in the business world. I mean, it is what it is, but I don't think that, uh, that's too much of a, an issue here. He says, quote, you become a laughing stock of your industry. Tony Khan may not have to pay attention to earnings season as publicly traded companies do. But AEW is not Amazon that can afford to stumble here and there. It isn't a healthy business to begin with. And there is no indication that it ever will be based on the last five years of its existence. Ooh, that's rough. In the real world, people and companies you work with need to be paid. TV deals aren't renewed due to poor or stagnant ratings. Advertisers and partners can choose to invest their time, money, and personnel in other businesses that can give them healthy returns. That's a good argument. That's really good right there. That's really solid. Not just the ratings issue, but they've also been trying to clean up the language and they've also been trying to clean up a lot of the imagery. A lot of the blood and the guts and stuff like that that AEW was doing before, they're not doing as much of it now. And that was a tactical decision by Tony Khan to try to appease advertisers and try to appease the networks, no doubt. You know, when they decided they weren't going to use as like they used to, there was a time where people were bleeding every week on Dynamite. There was a time where there was people getting choke slam on thumbtacks every week on Dynamite. There were people was going through glass every week on dynamite where people were cursing and live microphones every week on dynamite and that stopped and it's like it tapered off and now it's pretty much doesn't happen at all. 
it was at the benefit of the advertisers and the channels and the networks and all them. And it maybe had affected fan enjoyment because people wanted that because it was so different than what WWE was doing. And now they're not doing that stuff anymore. Guys aren't cursing in the live mic anymore. Guys aren't bleeding on television pretty much every week anymore. You know, and it takes some of the edge off. And maybe that's something that is a, a presentation issue with AEW that has changed that might have turned some people off. But it's just an idea I'm throwing out there. He mentioned CM Punk and saying that uh, he was right when he said that AEW isn't predicated on being a business that makes money. And uh, you don't have to agree with CM Punk on everything, but that part is true. Then he says, how can you keep your employees focused on growing the company, motivate them, increase your market share, build better working relationships with other companies and promote better cost control and budgeting when you keep throwing good money after bad? Hmm. I hate to say this, but the fall of AEW sits at the feet of one person and one person only. That is Shahid Khan's son. The poorly constructed and conceived AEW corporate infrastructure has finally caught up with the promotion with Khan desperately trying to plug the holes in the weakening dam he built in 2019 with paper mache. Mm. Ooh. Yikes. Okay. That was kind of stiff. He uh, continues by saying one aspect of the corporate structure alone is very eye opening. Part of an executive vice president's job is to give guidance and set a standard for all of the other supervisors and managers while also subbing for the president when the need arises. They are also supposed to help the company, quote, achieve their financial goals, create business plans and solve internal issues as they arise, preside over operations, pre prepare budgets, identify ways to maximize revenue, ensure company policies and procedures are followed by each department and att attract, retain and motivate staff. Those are some lofty set of objectives, aren't they? I wonder where he got that quotation from because he didn't put it in here. He could have said, uh, according to blah, 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 this is what an EVP actually does. Now, if you look at what the EVPs do, now, Kenny Omega has said he doesn't have any authority. And I would imagine the Young Bucks probably don't have that much either. But um, they did, at least in the early days, all of the EVPs, all four of them, were involved with attracting, retaining, and motivating talent. Or they put here staff, but you could say talent. Like, everybody was bringing in talent. Everybody had their own guys. Kenny Omega was a Japanese girls and whatever Japanese guys he had. And Young Bucks was some indie talent and people that were friends of his. And, of course, Cody was bringing in select WWE guys, especially for the backstage area like Dean Malenko and Arn Anderson and et cetera, et cetera. So they were doing stuff that was about helping the company seem legitimate and furthering its financial goals or whatever. It's just unfortunate that um, it didn't seem to work out <laughs> because none of these guys had any experience doing this stuff. So here is what um, the writer says. In his infinite wisdom, Tony Khan made the Young Bucks EVPs. Based on the above description, should an EVP, quote, storm a locker room and confront an employee about them speaking out of school? Nope. He should not do that. Um, and they did do that, and they're dumbasses. And they got their asses beaten. That's what they deserved. Poke fun at the situation, which by all accounts included several assaults on national television numerous times. Nope, they shouldn't do that either. Um, in fact, they should not have been mocking talent when they're in positions of power. You shouldn't be mocking the talent on television, unless the talent agreed to it. It's very unprofessional for you as an employee at a company to go out there and mock talent. It's, it's not sensible to do that. Um, he says, eight months later, flippantly introduced real backstage footage to continue their public feud with a former employee who is now employed by another promotion. Nope, shouldn't do that either. But they did it. And they blamed Tony Khan for it, by the way. They said, oh, it was Tony Khan's idea. We just gave him marching orders and that's what we did. Use company airtime to support an employee who, without the booker's consent, mentioned and mocked a serious backstage dispute live on their biggest event in the company's history, an act which led to a violent confrontation backstage and the loss of one of the company's biggest stars. Nope. I mean, you should always be 
the person who sets a standard in your locker room, leadership is a skill, man. And that's just what it boils down to. It's not a position. It's a skill. And you don't give people power and authority if they don't have the skills to be responsible. And it's clear that the Young Bucks, at the very least, were not responsible. I mean, they, they're they just terrible at their jobs. Yeah. <laughs> He says, quote, at least Kenny Omega was honest about his role as an MVP. I'm sorry, I keep saying MVP, EVP. When he recently spoke on his Twitch stream about how some of the locker room disputes are best settled by throwing hands. Um, I'm going to skip over that because we already went through that. He says, speaking of talent going completely off script and childishly airing backstage feuds on public airwaves, Wal Ospreay did the same on Dynamite, and we have yet to hear any kind of disciplinary action. Um... Pause. There was some conversation about that also being Tony Khan's idea. I can't confirm that clearly because I wasn't in the room, but I saw some stories that said that that was also Tony Khan's idea. That, you know, Will Ospreay take that shot at Triple H. But there's also people who say that Will Ospreay had planned to do it and uh, Tony Khan knew he was going to do that <clears throat> and let him do it anyway. But ultimately, I don't think that's a big deal. And I don't think he should be punished for that. I mean... No, I wouldn't punish him for it. I just told him to stop doing dumb shit. Like, don't do that shit again. You don't work in WWE. You're not going to wrestle this guy. Focus on making me money and not, you know, it popped the crowd. So I guess that was fine, but don't make it a habit. I guess you could say that's probably the best way to put it is you let him slide with it, but don't make it a habit. All right. So he continues by saying the problem is Tony Khan listens to the wrong people and has surrounded himself with an echo chamber filled with people who won't tell him the truth for fear of losing their seat on the gravy train or because he is such a nice guy. Khan may be a nice guy, but that doesn't mean he is a good businessman. If he was, the corporate foundation of AEW wouldn't have been what it is, a clubhouse filled with people perfectly willing to take Tony's money for doing very little in return. How trustworthy are people who would use you and treat you like that? That's a goddamn good question. When they talked him into hiring their wives to do like merchandise, they knew it was a joke. You know, if when they talked him into doing the first started all four of them being EVPs instead of just like maybe one or two of them, that's already at work. You know, <laughs> like this, so that's already you already getting worked. But then you talk these guys talked you into hiring their wives and girlfriends. Their cousins and best friends, you know, <clears throat> you basically an ATM at that point, you know, and it's, it sucks. It sucks big time. But I think that part of the reason why Tony Khan, and from what he sound like, he's not Vince. Vince, you know, verbally abuses people allegedly and, you know, he berates them. But ultimately he does listen when people are pushing back to a degree. It seems that Tony Khan has a nasty habit of freezing people out where he will absolutely disappear on you. You know, there's like, multiple stories of Tony Khan gets into a debate argument issue with a talent and then all of a sudden he vanishes. You don't see him anymore. You don't hear from him anymore. And next thing you know, you're outside the company or you've lost any and all uh, push or whatever. He never says anything about you, you know, and. People don't want that because that's a fate worse than death for, for some degree. People might actually prefer to get yelled at than to be frozen out like that. But I'm not saying that that's a fact. I'm just saying that that's something that people say. He says, it's quite clear that Tony Khan doesn't have the wherewithal to turn his passion project into a real business, nor does he have the self-awareness or the skills needed to turn AEW around. Well, that that much is pretty much true. Also, huge pop on using the word wherewithal, you know? You don't see that word a lot. Probably should bring that one back into regular, regular use. Uh, <laughs> but he says that he desperately wants to see AEW return to his former glory. He wants every brand to succeed, um, not only because he's a fan who watches everything from stardom to WWE, but as somebody who wants talent to be able to ink the best deals, he wants AEW to succeed. He says... Um, this company will exist as long as Shahid Khan burns his money. I will argue from one father to another 
that AEW's current state, the decision Khan made to air the all-in footage with all the other massive blunders he has made in recent years, that this is the one of those times when things have gone so badly and so wrong for one reason or another that you would be irresponsible if you didn't intercede. Someone needs to stop Tony Khan from digging that hole AEW is in. And that person is Shahid Khan. Wow. What an article. Um, some really good points made in this thing. His final point, though, is that, you know, Tony Khan has dug this hole and he's wasting all this money. Look, it, it's pretty clear that Shahid Khan, when this thing started, at least allegedly, he said that he wanted to watch Tony burn some of that, burn some of his inheritance while he was still alive. If that's the mythology around AEW, then he's not going to step in because this is what he gave the kid the money for. He gave him the money so that he could have fun while he was still alive to see it, you know? So he's not going to step in and tell Tony, you've had enough. Five years is enough. I'm going to cut you off now. No, he's not going to. He's not going to do that. You know, for starters, Shahid Khan still makes trillions of dollars somewhere else doing something else. This is a pittance to him. Second, he doesn't give a fuck about wrestling. He don't care about wrestling. So it's not like it's a thing where he's going to step in and put somebody else in control. The whole reason this thing exists is because he wants his son to have fun. As long as Tony is having fun with it, he's going to keep funding it. As long as Shahid Khan is seeing that Tony is enjoying himself... And look, he may have given Tony this this whole thing, hopefully to get him out of his hair. You know, like it might have been one of those gimmicks where he was like, hey, man, how do I get this kid away from me? You know what? I'm going to give you your own wrestling promotion. and You'll have something to do all day. <laughs> you know, like get out of the house. Go, go, get a, go get a wife and a girlfriend or something. You know, get out of here. Go travel the world. You know, go to... Uh, what was that place? The middle of Kentucky, Everett, Washington. Go find your treasure in Everett, Washington. Get the hell out of my house. Get out of my face. You know, like, do go do something else. Go do something productive. Or if you're not going to do anything productive, at least go do something you'll enjoy, for God's sakes. And he's not going to do this. Shahid Khan might be a co-founder of AEW. He might even be a co-owner. But he is not your savior. He is not going to step in. And pull the plug on this. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Because if it was gonna. He'd have done it by now. Now he may not have a choice. If you know Warner Brothers doesn't want to give them. More money. He might not have a choice. You know, Tony might pull the plug on it. At that point. But Shahid Khan is not going to wake up one day. And decide Tony. Enough's enough. We're killing this thing. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think he's that invested in this. It's not a core business that he cares about. It's one of the many toys that he owns that he lets Tony Khan go and play with, like the soccer team and the football team and all this kind of stuff. They're all just fun gimmicks. They don't affect the core business at all. It's just, hey, we own this thing. My son went to college. He knows how to manage you know, budgets and stuff like that. He knows how to do statistics. Go do that stuff for me, please. So I see Tony as being the manager and Shahid is like the owner, you know, he's where the, all the funding and all the revenue comes from. But do you think Shahid Khan is going into an office to talk about AEW business? I don't think so. You think he's out there trying to court advertisers and trying to court the TV network? I don't think so. I think he's probably just sitting back looking at Tony, like, what are you doing over there again? <laughs> What's it even called? You know, like, I don't even think he knows what the company is called. He's probably calling it All Elite Wrestling. What is, this is mine? I own this? <laughs> this is what you're doing, Anthony? In your spare time? In your room? You've been doing this since 1995 and you're still fucking it up? <laughs> oh, God. Um, very interesting article, but uh, it's not going to happen. I feel so bad for anybody who thought it would. <laughs> Shahid Khan's going to kill over and fucking die before anybody gets involved and prize this company away from Tony. Forget it. Shahid Khan probably never hear from Tony again if he took that company away from him. He'll never speak again. Like, are you serious? Tony loves this thing like nothing else in the world, man. No wife, no children, nothing. This is all he got. There's no way Shahid Khan is going to step in and take it from him. 
you can forget it. All right, like, share, subscribe. Thank you guys for your time. I'll talk to you guys later.